So, The Last of Us, episode one. Is this another game to live action failure? Or is this offering us something new? Let's find out and discuss it. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to the channel everyone, welcome to a new review series and that being for the new HBO TV series The Last of Us based on the hit acclaimed game of which I have never played so <laughs> I can't tell you anything about that. Um, yes, so as for the game, like I said, not something I've ever ventured into, gaming isn't my thing so for me this is nothing more than a TV show, so I cannot compare it to what the game has to offer or the world that the game introduces us to or anything like that, so I'm talking about it on its own merits. Now, the series stars Pedro Pascal, aka The Mandalorian, as Joel Miller, um, Bella Ramsey as Ellie Williams, Gabriel Luna as Tommy Miller, and a wealth of other characters that we're introduced to um, throughout this first episode which is um, 120 minutes long so pretty much feature length in runtime. Um, okay so I haven't watched any trailers for this film so or for this TV show sorry um, I've gone in completely blind I was aware that it was being made very little interest or intrigue going into it because like I said I'm not a gamer so I had no sort of brand recognition in that sense. So I've watched it completely blind, totally, not one trailer. So I've gone in, um, introduced to a rather compelling opening, um, set in the 1960s, TV host, questioning a couple of people, um, talking about fungi taking over the human body and if the world's temperature rose, which as we know it did. And um, we then jumped to 2003 and we're introduced to Joel Miller, Pedro Pacal's character, and his daughter, um, Sarah Miller, played by Nico Park. Um, for the first half hour of the show, um, this is what we're given to. We're introduced to these characters, um, a lot of character growth for the young girl, um, quite intriguing. And then the show went and pulled the rug out from underneath me because I honestly didn't expect her to be killed. I'm sure that if you played a game, you probably know this is the backstory. I'm assuming it is. Um, I may be wrong. Um, so that's just, she's killed. She's killed um, as the sort of infection takes hold and we're in the sort of first days of, of the breakdown of society and all this sort of thing. Now, I knew the show was about um, an adult and a young girl and I assumed it was him and his daughter. That's what I expected. So, yes, so that was good in that sense that I'd gone in blind. And then we jump forward to 2003, 20 years. That's a bit set in, in sorry, 2023 by 20 years. That bit set in 2003. And the world, the infection has taken hold, the world has broken down, um, there's a struggle between an oppressive government and military, you've got rebels on the inside, we're introduced to this quarantine zone, um, the rest of the episode we're introduced to the characters, we're introduced to the world, um, obviously this young girl is carrying a sort of cure for the infection or something like this, all this stuff going on. Um, yeah, we're introduced to how this world works, um, the, the, the problems that the world has outside of the quarantine zone with um, smugglers, with um, slavers, all this sort of a thing. So uh, there we go. And, and that's the world we're introduced to in the primary story of them trying to get this young girl across country and it obviously ends up being just the two of them and whatever they run into. Um, yeah, so that's essentially the story. So I thought the show looked great. I thought it, you know, the set design, the money is there on the screen, the effects are great. There's no problem in that sense of of the show. The, um, Pedro Pascal is a compelling um, actor. He has compelling screen presence, and he's enjoyable in the role here. No issue with that. Um, the young girl, I think I'm going to have to get used to her. Um, I think I much preferred Nico Park, the girl who played his daughter at the beginning. 
um, than what I have. But I'm hoping that the relationship between these two it does grow. The, sh the show needs it to. The show needs them to, to work together for this show to be a success. Um, the primary issue that I have is that I'm not watching anything new. You know, after watching 11 seasons of The Walking Dead, um, seven seasons of Fear the Walking Dead, Walking Dead World Beyond, etc., and a wealth of other zombie shows and films, I feel like I'm I'm watching nothing fresh. I feel like I've seen it all before. Whatever it's given me, it's just it's it's that again. So there's it, so it feels like it, it feels like it lacks freshness. It feels like it lacks originality because we've seen it. It's been done and it's been done to death and it has been done um, to varying degrees of greatness before. So it was a compelling first episode. It was an enjoyable first episode. I do like this sort of storytelling, this sort of world building, um, a sort of post-apocalyptic future kind of setting and all this. Um, but like I said, the problem is the originality side of it. Um, that's that's the worrying part I have for the show, for me going into the show. But I will be reviewing it. I will be watching it. Um, it was a good start. And I'm hoping for better. Moving on. So this is AJ. Let me know your thoughts on this show down below. Um, what you thought of it after watching it. Um, I'm intrigued. Um, yeah. Um, do you play the game? And is this a fateful adaptation to the game thus far? I don't know. Seriously, I, I've got no idea. You'd have to tell me. Um, and I will be reviewing this on a weekly basis. So come and join me. Um, and let's talk The Last of Us. This is AJ. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Take care all and goodbye.